Shetty. Remote fire mission. Me shooter, you looker. Attack heading as required. You'll In April 2020, a new brigade of the British Army was born. It brought together attack and reconnaissance helicopters together with their specialist aviation engineers under a new headquarters, 1st Aviation Brigade. So last night we obviously struck at Tomahawk and Sword. Um... Where previously each regiment was tasked separately in support of other formations, now the brigade could build and command their own task forces tailored to each mission bolting on extra capabilities from across defence, like Chinook, Puma and parts of 16 Air Assault Brigade as required. A year on from their formation, the Brigade is validating some of its parts for the very first time. So this evening we're uh, going to take our Wildcat helicopter and we're going to go on a training mission. The plan is to head to Duxford, which today plays the part of our reconnaissance objective. We'll fly at a medium height of around 1,000 feet until we get close by, then drop down to around 100 feet and make our way covertly to the airfield. We'll stand off uh, as far as we can away and get our sensors in to the target area. Uh, and then we'll spend some time there soaking that target area and assessing whether it, the runway's suitable, whether it's being used over the darkness hours for uh, civil movement, and we'll record all that. We will then uh, extract ourselves again covertly from that area as low as we can until we've made uh, enough distance from the target, and then we'll climb back up to medium level and recover back here and hand anything we've got over to be further processed. First Aviation Brigade's two main assets are the Wildcat, their reconnaissance helicopter, and the Apache, designed for attack. Brought together under the new brigade, the two can work side by side more seamlessly. The Wildcat is largely unarmed. It's light and agile with excellent camera and targeting systems. It finds the enemy and communicates the target to the Apache. The Apache is heavily armed, designed to fight its way to the objective, fight on the objective, and fight its way back. We've got three crews, so we've got an aircraft commander, pilot and a crewman in the back. So it really is like what we call a three crew concept and everyone has a say. So we've you know, got a corporal in the back, I will be uh, as a captain, I will be the pilot and I could have an aircraft commander as a staff sergeant or a sergeant. So it's completely turning the usual balance of the army and it's a really nice environment. It's very much like everyone has a say and we are one crew together. The Apache is a an absolute, it is a delight to fly. So it's got lots of power, it's agile, uh, it has a great presence, and I think that's part of our deterrent. There will always be competition with us. Yeah, you know, they're Apache and they're attack, they're ballistic glass that separates the two and they sit behind each other. Um, and, you know, we're the ones, you know, three of us can all turn around and chat to each other. Not that we do that when we're flying, of course. It is designed for one thing, and, and we know that our task is to go out and to find and strike potential enemies um, and we take a lot of pride um, but we're very humble in what we do. Actually that's how everyone improves it's by trying to trying to be the best and, and that's what works because everyone ups their game especially when we work together as well and everyone brings their best to the party. <laughs> but World Cup's the best right? <laughs> absolutely. You fly the best aircraft is what you're trying to tell me. Yeah absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Still unknown whether the emitter is attached to the actual weapon system and if so, if they have any actual ammunition. As exercise pinion dawn draws to a close, 1st Aviation Brigade prepare a demonstration of their capabilities. It involves one Apache, callsign Machete, one Wildcat, callsign Carbon, and they've brought in two Chinooks and the Paras to secure objective Tomahawk. Their mission? To find and neutralise an SA-8 enemy surface-to-air missile approximately 600 metres to the west, whilst their GPS and comm systems are intermittently jammed by the enemy.
So if you look over to my right hand side, the end of the strip would block approximately a kilometer away, you should begin to see carbon unmasking. The Wildcat is going to unmask itself just enough so that it can get that direct line of sight to the target. It is going to set the laser designator onto the target. The Apache is going to remain concealed, not exposing itself throughout all of this and fire the Hellfire. So it'll be a lock on after launch where the missile essentially will climb see the laser spot and then send back down towards the target. To laser hand over target, both aircraft, both Wildcat and Apache, have a laser target designator on it. So essentially we fire a laser at a target and then the other aircraft um, has a laser finder essentially and they will be able to pick up our laser code and from that they will be able to find, do a sweep of the battlefield, see exactly where our lasers point to and lock onto that target straight away. So it's the quickest way we can hand over a target to each other. The two combined assets really complement each other and that's where, you know, for the rivalry aside, Wildcat and Apache together is a really potent combination. Metal, wheels down. Before the formation of 1st Aviation Brigade, Army Aviation existed in a number of different pockets, which meant that it was quite disparate in the way that it was commanded. It was very much like we were in our separate regiments. So we were one regiment Army Air Corps and we flew Wildcats, and you had three in, Wolf, uh, three in four reg, the other side of the country in Suffolk flying Apache. It meant that there wasn't the command and control over the whole um, of all Army Aviation outputs to deliver a credible capability to the Army. For us, it's about going and engaging the enemy before the enemy have a chance to engage our ground forces. So the ground battle becomes what we call an anticlimactic battle, because that battle's already been done. Carbon fire mission, code alpha, Tango 09. We're agile, we can deploy rapidly, uh, we have a long range, we have reach, we can go places quickly, we're survivable uh, and, uh, and we're, we're lethal. The vision is much bigger than the exercise we're on today. You know, we start from humble beginnings, but the hope is that over the next two, three, four, five years, that actually this exercise grows and we start to look at, you know, projecting out into Europe, exercising with um, partners uh, and, and allies. Um, but we, we start somewhere, and so Stanter is as good a place to start as any. The validation part doesn't really matter. What, what matters is we come out here and we do the job properly. And therefore, you know, we put a confidence into our commanders that when we come and we, and we, we actually deploy, we, we, they can trust us to do what we should be doing. The harder the brigade push us, the better the output will be, even if we fail along the way. Rather fail here than fail in real time. The formation of the brigade to now command the Army Aviation um, is really exciting. And I was lucky enough to deploy on lots of exercises, both before the creation of the brigade and since the creation of the brigade, and it's an absolute force multiplier. Fly, fight, lead is their motto. The brigade has begun as they mean to go on. Hannah King, Forces News. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.